So what if one morning you woke up, you look in the mirror, getting ready to work, and you go, oh, and it, you're the woman in this picture, and looking back, you're a man. Would that kind of freak most of you out a little bit? That feeling, how, you know, how would you feel if that happened? That's what transgender people feel. Going through their lives with one body, but in their mind, they're actually seeing something else. Now, when you have a baby these days, people always say, is it a boy or a girl? But in fact, it's not, a, it's not binary. Gender is a spectrum. All sorts of options in between. So the people ask, well, what does transgender really mean? The simplest definition I have found, it means not identifying with the sex that you were assigned at at birth. That's an important definition. And sex and gender are not necessarily the same thing. Sex denotes biological characteristics, and your gender denotes social and cultural character characteristics. Now, here's four different topics that are important to remember as well. Gender identity is what you feel in your head, what you feel that you're like. Now, your gender expression could mean, well, how do I present myself to the public? Am I androgynous? Am I somewhere in between? Are people not quite sure what you are? That's what gender expression is. And sexual orientation, it's who you love, who you're attracted to. And then finally, the sex that you were, or gender you were assigned at at birth. Those are four very different characteristics and they kind of mix and match in between. Now people ask, well, Vicki, how many transgender people are there? And nobody really knows for sure because when you do the census, nobody asks you, male, female, are you transgender, right? That, that's not a question that people necessarily ask uh, when you apply for a job or anywhere else. But the recent estimates that about 0.6% of the population, about 1.4 million people, are transgender. No surprise, California is one of the hot spots. Surprisingly, Georgia and New Mexico are as well. Now, it used to be that transgender was the overarching term, under which came transsexual and androgynous and cross-dressers, but lately people have been saying, maybe we should separate that, and there's two umbrellas. Transgender, under which transsexuals intersex two spirits, and then gender non-conforming, that could be you're in darkness and you're somewhere in between and you're not quite sure and people aren't quite sure what you are. And that's a very uh, new development. Now, what causes this? And there is no consensus on what really causes it. There's a lot of theories that, you know, when you're six weeks in the womb, um, these, you have three washes of male hormones, and depending on how they take, you become male or you become female. Sometimes the timing or the, the amount of hormones isn't right, and your body goes one way and your brain goes the other way. Now, a lot of cures, people said, oh my gosh, that person is mentally ill, they're sick. There have been all sorts of cures tried to date, and not one really has been successful. As I said, Trans people, they are not mentally ill. And this is the bottom uh, sentence here. That most transgender people, if not all, do not want to cure. Somebody were asked a transgender person, hey, I got a pill here that will make you no longer transgendered. Most of us would not take that pill. Here's another example. Well, is it just in your head? This study was done a few years back in Scandinavia. Uh, there's a part of the brain called the BSTC, uh, you can see a, quote, normal heterosexual man, what that part looks like. And then in the lower left-hand corner, homosexual man looks the same. The woman, on the other hand, look at the upper right. It's quite a bit different. But what's interesting in a male-to-female transsexual, it doesn't look like a male. It looks more like the female side. So that's pretty interesting as well. Now, there's a couple key questions or three key questions. What's it like to be transgender? Are we becoming more visible and how do people act toward us? It's very hard for transgender people because it's not like being, you know, it, nowadays if you're gay, people go, eh, you know, did you hear that Mark is gay? Yeah, so what? But if, uh, did you hear that uh, Francis is changing genders? That becomes a little bit more of a gossip um, topic and it's a little harder to 
um, lived with. One third of trans people in DC earned less than $10,000 a year. Almost 30% of the trans of the, uh, of the people who responded were actually unemployed. In San Francisco, liberal capital of the world, a 64% retort, reported a salary of $25,000, which buys what, maybe two hamburgers these days in the city, but um, over 40% did not have health insurance. Now this is a very depressing slide because it's so hard. 41% of trans or gender nonconforming people have attempted suicide. Think about that. That's a very large number compared to the overall population of 4.6% and the lesbian, gay, and bisexual of 20%. That shows how hard it really is. So one of the things that if you're a trans person, and I'll reiterate this later at the end, is having the support and allowing transgendered youth to transition, the suicide rate would go down and it's so much better for their health. I'm not gonna go into detail on this, but the, the green, yellow bars, um, this is a bunch of health issues, how harder, how much harder it is for trans people to get medical help. I know some trans people, friends of mine, who've gone to the doctor and they've been refused. The doctor won't treat them. But we're making progress. In California, now insurers cannot deny care to transgender patients, and the Federal Health Board ruled that Medicare can actually pay for transgendered surgeries. That's a big step over what it was even five years ago. This also is a very important graph. Five years ago, or 2011, only 2.0% of college students came out as trans. Five years later, it was up to 3.1%. Now, does that mean that Suddenly there's more transgender people. No, it means that they're coming out more and it's becoming a little bit easier to say that I'm trans and you're not gonna be shunned at and made fun of as much as you were before. If you watched the Democratic Convention a few years back, for the first time ever, we had a trans person actually speak. And in Virginia, as part of that election, a trans woman actually won her seat in the U.S. State House in Virginia. And that, that's pretty, pretty important. Now, in terms of visibility, you've all heard of Caitlyn Jenner, and you've all seen the Matrix movies, right? They were the Wachowski brothers. Now they're Wachowski sisters. Uh, against me, a punk rock band, their lead singer became Laura Jane Grace. And you maybe have heard of the show I Am Jazz, which kind of documents what it's like to be young, trans, and growing up. National Geographic Time Magazine, 20 years ago, this sort of thing would not have been on the cover. So it's really changed a lot. Fox News, however, uh, Dr. Keith Ablo actually said that watching Chaz Bono, remember, he was Chastity Bono, the uh, child of Sonny and Cher, on Dancing with the Stars, it's toxic to your children. Don't let your kids watch that. They're going to want to become transgendered themselves. And that's not how it works. Now, this is one of the key issues, and you all, as students still in high school, may be dealing with this. I gotta go to the bathroom, which, where do I go? I go to one, I get yelled at, I go to the other, I get beat up. And my opinion is the answer is not to have all uh, gender-neutral bathrooms. You know, if I present as a woman, I want to be able to use the woman's restroom. However, you know, a few years back when uh, it became um, a law, a national law, that you could not um, discriminate against trans people and they had, you, were, you had to let them use the bathroom that they identify with. Well, a whole bunch of people said, you know, they, they boycotted Target, men don't belong in women's restrooms, here's the kind of reaction that we got. It's a mental disorder, there are only two genders. Very, very bad misconception of reality. This is critical, hate. Hate is not the choice. It's not a choice. I'm sorry, the other way around. Hate is the choice. Being trans is not. I didn't choose to be transgender, but people choose to hate. And unfortunately, what happens? That hate, over a hundred people a year actually are murdered just for being transgender. It's very, very hard. Now I got to talk a little bit about me. That's all kind of the little the science and the, the graphs. But it's important for you to see what my life was like. 
I'm 66 years old, landscape architect, environmentalist. You can see I'm a musician as well. Um, I've got two kids, grandparent. It's um, and Latina, so that makes puts me makes it a little bit harder sometimes. However, I did own my own company, so I wasn't going to be fired uh, like a lot of my friends were. But I was concerned about my clients. So here's me when I was uh, uh, a year old. I was born Esteban Estrada Jr. I didn't know until I was five. And American schools renamed me Steve. Now growing up, people think that well, did you play with dolls and were you kind of a sissy? I'm like no. I played with trucks. I was out in the backyard making freeways and, and out in the street playing football all through high school. I ran track in high school. And, but at 10 years old, I remember on my birthday, my mom saying, Stevie, make a wish. And that was the first time I wished I was a little girl. And I never told anybody for 43 years after, until 43 years. I kept that all inside. Here I am at college at Cal Poly. This is my mom. She never had a clue until I told her at 53 years old. And she took it very hard, as I will reiterate in here in a little bit. Married 25 years. Eventually, my wife wanted a, quote, normal husband. Um, so that was very hard for me. Um, I didn't really tell her about being transgender until I was a year after marriage. But we had uh, two kids. Here's my daughter. Um, my mom, her mom, and her mom. So there's all five generations. Two years later, I had a son. And you can see that's me. I kind of like a Cat Stevens look, sort of. But look how normal. What a perfect nuclear family. He even had a white cat and a Sheltie and, and kind of a brown kid and a little white kid. You know, So he kind of, kind of touched it all. And uh, nobody had any idea. I went through, looked at trying to, to be as macho as I could. That was my picture on my passport. Uh, I actually, when I transitioned went full time, I didn't have a chance to redo the passport and that's the picture that I presented at security. So you can imagine the kind of looks that I got. So the first time out of the house, uh, this is where the name Vicky came from. Cause I remember knocking on a door and a guy answered, hi, I'm Mary. And I, and uh, cause it was clearly a guy in the dress cause he had a beard. And he said, what's your name? And I said, well, it's Steve. Well, I actually said, it's Steve. And no, 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 what's your feminine name? I didn't know you had to have one. So right there on the spot, he goes, I got to put a feminine name on your name tag, on your name tag. And I thought very quickly, the name Vicky to me sounded very feminine and that name stuck. So that's what I looked like going out in public. Didn't do that very often though. But what kind of changed my life, I got to go to a transgender conference in Atlanta where there were 500 other trans girls. I got to be a girl for five days, not two or three hours. And it was then that I decided, okay, this is, I need to transition from male to female. And boy, did I transition. I actually did it live on the air on local PBS station. Um, people called in. And I actually convinced the interviewer that I could should I, I that I should dress as Vicky. Um, I went home, started to go home to dress back into Steve, and I instead went to the office dressed as Vicky. And I never went back to being Steve after this interview. So at the age of fifty three, I decided to go full time. Now, a funny story associated with this: two weeks after I took this picture, I went to visit my son. I flew from. San Diego to New York. I was terrified because I had never been on an airplane and my ID still said mail. And I got to New York and I had my luggage gotten to baggage claim. And I, and I had to go to the bathroom. And so I quickly ran to the bathroom right by the back, baggage claim. I came out and I'm sitting there waiting for my baggage. 10 minutes, 15 minutes, 20 minutes. Somebody says, ma'am, you might want to look behind you. I tried to be so inconspicuous. I didn't want to draw any attention. But there, hanging perfectly from my skirt, was the toilet seat cover. Nobody said anything for 20 minutes. So that was a little embarrassing for me. So one year after going full time, I decided that I had to have the surgery. Now, important to remember that not all transsexuals have to have the surgery. Some don't want it. Some can't afford it. And it doesn't make them any less of a woman. Now, a documentary was filmed, um, and it was actually shown on the Discovery Channel, 
as I said earlier, my mom didn't take it too well. She didn't actually speak to me for a year. And um, that was very hard. My mom and dad had already been divorced, but my dad actually went with me. He went with me to the surgery. And when I woke up, I don't want to cry because I will. He actually, I found this teddy bear that he said, it's a girl. So, because during the documentary he said, this is Vicki Estrada, Estrada Land Plane, lives in San Diego, it didn't take much to find my email. I got hundreds of emails, some very good, some very bad. And I got to be honest, I cried when I read some of those emails. But you know what? I said, screw this. I'm going to celebrate. I had my, I gave myself a rebirth party. 300 people, it cost me a bit, but it was something I wanted to celebrate. And it was one of the best days of my life. My daughter, who some of you may recognize, she actually teaches third grade over here at Valley View. Um, at her wedding, I'm still her father. I'm not going to deny that. I got to walk down the aisle. But... People were still laughing at me. I don't know if you know what it's like to be laughed at. Walking down the street, people, women would pick up their kids and go to the other side of the street like, what am I going to do? It was really hard for me. So I actually had facial feminization surgery, and that's what I looked like when I woke up. It was an 11-hour surgery, but did it make a difference two years later? See, that's what I looked like. For $45,000 later, uh, that gave me some confidence that I wouldn't be laughed at. However, remember, a lot of people can't afford this. And if you see a trans person walking down the street and they don't pass well, and it's obviously a, a man in a dress, just say good morning, good afternoon, treat them like anybody else. Don't laugh, don't point. And that happens way too much. Now, how did my family react? I got two kids. You can see my son here with his boys and my daughter with, uh, with her boy, Thatcher. Funny thing about Thatcher, when he was three years old, and this gives me hope that kids, younger kids these days, um, that it doesn't matter. I showed him my driver's license when I was Steve, and he was only three, and I said, and I said who's that? He goes, that's you when you were a boy. It didn't faze him. It didn't faze him at all. And to this day, all my grandkids call me Tita. They kind of made it up, kind of half out to half nana. Um, I ended up, after the divorce, I ended up marrying another trans woman on the left-hand side, upper left, you see Linda. She's also trans. And what's interesting is about half of us end up with other trans women because it's so hard. I thought I was going to be with a man. Um, but I was terrified. God, if I go out on a date, when do I tell him? How do I tell him that I used to be a, a, a man before? That's not an easy thing to do. My grandson, Thatcher, who lives here, Brando and Aiden live in, um, in New York, and I got one more coming in March. Now, has my personality changed? I could spend hours. Probably the best way to summarize it is as a woman, I listen better. Does that mean that women listen better than guys? Mm, maybe. <laughs> and my ego used to be, being a designer, a lamp planner, when a client would come to me and say, I don't like your design, I would be so defensive and say, no, 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 you got to do it. But the ego has shrunk a little bit. I'm not necessarily saying that all men have bigger egos than women, but, you know. <laughs> <coughs> Now, are there differences between men and women? I was one of the owners of the San Diego Athletic Club for 25 years on the, on the man's side. And for that one year of transition, even though legally I could have gone to the women's locker room, I didn't. I went to the men's locker room and I went home to change into Vicky. That was really hard because I started to get breast and it could be you know, before surgery, but in the men's shower, <coughs> that makes it a little bit awkward. But because my mom hadn't accepted me, I was in the men's steam. And I started to cry and I came out into the main locker room and the men goes, hey, you start to knock it off, you know, man up. Little did they know. Fast forward a year in the women's locker room. Same thing, I was in women's sauna. I came out crying still because my mom hadn't accepted me still. And unlike the men, every one of the women in the locker room said, you sit down. 
you know, because a lot of them actually fought me going over there, but that quickly changed. Everyone was stopped putting on their makeup, came over and started hugging and saying, tell us what's wrong. And men didn't do that. So I could spend hours on that. So the last slide, this is important. A couple final words. First they ignore you, then they laugh at you, then they fight you, then you win. Gandhi said that. The second one though. It is better to be hated for what you are than love for what you are not, who you are not. So hopefully today, if you had any fears or any concerns, or if your best friend or brothers or even parents kind of come out and saying, you know what, I'm confused, I want to change gender, the most important thing you can do is support them, love them like you would anybody else. Thank you.